which drink has the most electrolytes. Now the purpose of my project is to find which drink out of Gatorade, orange juice, chocolate milk, and coconut water. Four common drinks, which one has the most electrolytes? Now an electrolyte is any substance that has the capacity to conduct electricity. And your body needs electrolytes to help function in your organ system and other parts of your body. And when you exercise, you lose electrolytes in your sweat, such as sodium and potassium, and you need to regain them so that you can stay healthy and keep playing your sports. So, I chose these four drinks because Gatorade is advertised and well known to have electrolytes, and that's what it's basically made for to help athletes when they're exercising and afterwards. And orange juice, it wasn't specifically, people don't really know much about it, but I hear that before Gatorade was popular, orange juice was more what you would have. Chocolate milk, I had no clue, wouldn't have thought anything about it, but people say that because of the milk, it really helps your body and it's got a lot of nutrients that it's a surprising one not many people know about. And coconut water is a new drink that just kind of is becoming popular, new flavors and getting sold a lot. And it's kind of, everyone's been saying, these new athletes, that it really helps your body stay replenished when you lose all your electrolytes. So our, my hypothesis was that chocolate milk would have the most electrolytes, followed by coconut water, then orange juice, Gatorade, and my control of tap water when it have barely any electrolytes because it's just tap water and it has no nutrients added to it to make it specifically for apples. Now, I chose this order and made this hypothesis because of background research and nutritional labels on each of these drinks that I chose. Sodium, potassium, and calcium are three of the most common electrolytes found in any drink you're going to be consuming to be able to get electrolytes. And based on how many milligrams of potassium and sodium and the daily percent value of calcium based on your diet compared to each other, this was the, an estimate that made the most sense based on the values and the content. So now after I did this, all this research, I needed to figure out a way to measure how many electrolytes it has, but I couldn't do that directly because of the way it is. So I had to find the current of the drinks. What I could put into a formula, G is the conductance in Siemens equals current, which is measured in amps, divided by V, the voltage that I'm going to use. So if I found the conductance of a drink, since electrolytes have the capacity to conduct electricity, the higher the conductance, the more electrolytes that would be in the drink. So, I connected a digital multimeter, which measures current in milliamps, for the setting that it was on, but that's what it measured, to battery clips and wires, just a little bit of pictures, but you guys all saw my experiment. And then I have two copper wires at the end of my circuit, and they're wrapped around a one-inch ballpoint pen tube that was hollow. And that what that does is it makes a conductance sensor that I'm able to put into a liquid that will like basically see the current of whatever the liquid is and it'll appear on the screen of the digital multimeter. So I did 20, 30 trials of each and 30 milliliter, milliliters of solution in each cup and each time I used a different sample of solution and I cleaned the sensor in distilled water each time. Now I waited for 30 seconds before taking the reading. I chose 30 seconds because before I did my real trials and I was experimenting, I saw that as the multimeter would go up throughout the 30 seconds, it would kind of start to plateau. The numbers stay about the same around 30. So I did that so that I could get enough trials to get a good result, but also still have enough time for it to fully register. So if I were to do this again, I would probably choose a longer time to see how the rate of increase of the villa, the current, was affected by time, or if the multimeter just needs a longer time to be able to fully get an accurate result. But after I did all of my testing and found the averages, I found that coconut water has the most electrolytes, followed by chocolate milk, orange juice, Gatorade, and tap water. Now this graph shows the averages and comparison to each other, and this one shows the trials and then again kind of the average of comparison. So this one is coconut water, chocolate milk, orange juice, Gatorade, and tap water, and each one of these little points where it goes up and down is a different trial. So I use standard deviation also in finding my results, which is kind of a way to realize what trials may have been outliers and which ones aren't exactly, maybe, maybe a mistake was made. So a, mishap. Trial, a mishap. A mishap. So maybe this trial was a little bit of a mishap and maybe that one, but overall I want to keep all my results and you should never get rid of any results. And in conclusion, my this was achieved that I found that if you want to get the most electrolytes, you should drink coconut water. And my independent variable, which was the drink, related to my dependent variable, the conductance, when each different drink had a different conductance, so my experiment was successful. 
but there were a lot of possible causes of error. My multimeter blew a fuse, and I had to replace my multimeter, then go back to the old multimeter and replace the fuse. And maybe if a fuse made a multimeter work differently, I could have gotten different readings based on how much power of the fuse had. Also, the 9-volt battery, I put in my formula divided by 9 because that was the voltage of the battery I was using, but it wasn't always at 9 volts because as the battery is used, the voltage goes down. So I tried to replace the volts every once it got to around 7 volts so that it's still about the same if you divide by 9 than it is 7. And you can still get about the right results, but if I did it again, I'd want to find the exact voltage for each trial and then be able to put that in the formula instead of put 9 volts. Um, and a lot of other small human errors, like I could have put a little too much liquid in one, I could have timed it a couple seconds longer, the multimeter, the way I put the sensor in could have been a little bit different. And when I did put the sensor in, when the sensor only hit the liquid in the bottom of the cup, the current would slowly go up, but when it hit the side of the cup, it jumped around a lot, and that's because it was trying to find the current of the liquid and the cup at the same time, which it can't do, so then it'd get confused and jump all over the place. But the biggest thing I found was that when I put the sensor in the chocolate milk, this greenish brown goo um, that the dad loves was attracted to the sensor. And when I lifted the sensor out, the goop would be stuck around the sensor. And when it was still in, around like 20 to 25 seconds, the, as the current was going up, but the goop was like coming how, to How did you know it was goop and not gum? <laughs> okay, shh. <laughs> I'm going to do what I did to that judge and not finish answering your question. Uh, <laughs> um, the, points the, off. the current sort of started to go down. So during a few like practice trials, I tried to stir around, and that made the goop stay away and the current go up. But in the interest of keeping only one variable, I didn't end up stirring. And I let the goop stay. Um, it's, I'm going to tell you in a second. Um, and then for the coconut water, when I put it in there, there was like a fizzing right around the two ends of the metal wires. And this like thin white crust kind of formed around the wires. And I didn't know what that was either. So like after each trial, I tried to like scrape it off a little bit because I thought it was possible to there. But what I realized after further research was that electrolysis is what was taking place. And what that is, it is the process of a chemical or a compound breaking down into smaller particles. So when two metal electrodes, which are my two copper wires, are submerged into a liquid filled with ions, positive and negative charge, basically one term or one wire becomes a negative term, which is the cathode, and one becomes a positive terminal, which is the anode, and they attract ions of the opposite charge, so the negative ions go to the positive terminal and vice versa. And when that happens, a reaction occurs and a new substance is formed. So the physique was the reaction is a new substance with the crust and the group. And so that was going on when all the ions were moving around that this new substance was created. So in the end, I achieved my purpose. My process was partially correct. If these two were to be switched, then it would have been fully correct. So this may have been because of all the small mishaps during the experiment about electrolysis and what I'm trying to do to avoid it. Or it could just be that coconut water, all the hyperbatics to use. And I will do a lot of things differently if I were to do it again, but overall, it's really kind of tragic. How'd that coconut water taste? Uh, <laughs> thank you. How'd the oh, God, it was disgusting. Okay, off the record, never drink coconut water ever in your life. It's the worst thing ever. How many electrolytes are there in beer? Go say what? How many electrolytes are there in beer? Beer? Uh, beer. Low electrolytes. How do you know? We should test it. No, we should test it. We'll test it later today. Science fair, Dan.